we're going to start on this section, 1.1 basic raster processing. In your data package, we have this folder called SRTM. This contains four different tiles. This is the elevation data from the SRTM mission. This was a mission that was in early 2000. They had fitted a laser sensor on the International Space Station, which measured the height of every pixel on Earth. And it is the most accurate measurements of the Earth's surface known to date. Everybody uses that as the elevation data. They provide the data as tiles. So you have different tiles that you can download. There's a specific format that SRTM uses called HGT, which, okay, of course, GDAL supports it. So we're going to read those files. And the task here is first, let's learn how to read those files using GDAL, get some information about it. The task at hand is that we have this four files. I'm going to show this in QGIS now in the SRTM folder. We have tiles like this. This is what each SRTM tile looks like. This is rendered in black to white. So black is low elevation, white is higher elevation. Each pixel here is the value of the elevation at that pixel. So 4829, this is the height of the pixel in meters. This is what the data looks like. It's georeference data. If I load the base map around it, you can see it sits at the correct place on Earth. This is the data around Mount Everest. And we have four tiles. So we have this four different tiles we downloaded. Now I want to merge all those tiles into a single raster. So I'm doing some analysis. I need full data, not in tiles. So I want to merge them into a single raster. We'll learn how to do this using GDAL tools. Also, you can see there's where the tiles intersect. This is where Mount Everest is. So we're going to merge those tiles and then do some use GDAL tools to find what is the elevation of Mount Everest where the tiles intersect. So we'll find the maximum elevation in the merged tile. Doing so, we'll learn how the commands work and how to merge and process this data set. Okay, so let's open our terminal. When you are typing commands, sometimes when you are trying to do a new command, you want to start fresh. So you can type this command clear on Windows, on Mac and Linux, and CLS, clear screen on Windows. So if you type CLS, just start fresh screen on the same terminal. On Mac and Linux, you can type clear. So I'll just clear up all the history and you have a fresh screen that you can start with. Windows, the command is CLS clear screen. From our root folder, you're going to go to this folder called SRTM. So you're going to first type CD space SRTM. It also helps to just type a few characters and press tab to autocomplete. This ensures that you are in the correct place. If it autocompletes, then you know you are in the correct place. So make sure you go to this directory called SRTM, which is at the root of your data package. And on Windows, you can type DIR. On Mac or Linux, you can type LS. And it should show you these four HGT files, which are there in this directory. We're going to run a first command. I want to get some information. What is the resolution of these files? How big are those files? What are the coordinates? So if we have files like this, we can use the gdal info command space, and we can give the name of the file. We're going to use this file n28e086.hgt. So you can either copy paste the command from your course material, or you can just type it gdal info space n28e086.hgt. You can use autocomplete to complete the name and then press enter. So go and type this command and press enter. Once you press enter, you're going to see some information printed on that. Mm -hmm. Let me explain all the stuff that is printed here. First step, it says your file size is 3601 by 3601. It's a raster data is a grid of pixels. 3601 columns, 3601 rows. That's the size of your raster. This is the projection. You can see this is in the projection EPSG 4326, that long. You have the pixel size. So this is the resolution of this data in the units of the CRS. This is in degrees. So this will be in degrees. This roughly is about 30 meters. So each pixel is 30 meters resolution in this. You have this information, you are shown the bounding box. So this is the coordinate of the upper left column, lower left, upper right, and lower right. right? So you can get some information about this. At the end, you will have the information with the bands. If you have multi-band data, you will see information about each band. This is a single band raster data. You have one band, 
of elevation values. So it says there's only one band. The type of this band is int 16. So each pixel can store 16 bit of integer values. The node data value is this. Typically you have a node data value. So wherever this value occurs, it'll be denoted by the software. So this is where there's a mask. So every the node data mask is at minus three, two, seven, six, eight. And the unit is meters. So the pixel values are in the units of meters. So that's all the information we got. So quite helpful. If you had this data that was missing a projection, you'll say missing projection here. If you had, you know, three band data or four band data and you want to know what those are, you can do, you can just do GDAL info and you'll find that. Let's look at the documentation. So we're going to go to gdal.org. One of the skills I'm going to teach you is how to read the documentation of these commands effectively and not to be afraid of this documentation. If you come to this documentation, it may seem like Greek and Latin to you at first, but after that, you take this course, it all makes sense to you. So from the GDAL website, we go to the programs. You can see there are raster programs and vector programs. So I'm going to click on the raster programs. These are all the different programs that are available. I'm going to open the GDAL info documentation. The way to read the documentation is GDAL info, options, 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 data set name. So all the stuff that is in the square brackets are options that you can specify with the command, but they are not mandatory. You can just say GDAL info and the name of the data set. That's what we did so far, right? We just said GDAL info, space command, and we use the default value of all the options. But now if you want to specify the options, you can use that. Each option is documented here. Let's learn about this option called stats. So I'm gonna scroll down this documentation and we have this documentation for stats. So if you give this option dash stats, it says read and display image statistics. Force computation if no statistics are stored in the image. So I want to know a little bit more about the range of pixel values that are contained in this raster data set. If once you run it, it saves the data, saves the information in the data itself. So next time you ask it, it's there. It doesn't have to compute it, but it's not there. It's going to compute this. So let's see how to run this. We'll say GDAL info space dash stats and then the data set name. So back to our screen. You can use the up arrow key to go back to the command that you typed. So if I type up arrow key, you can see this was a previous command that I typed. And I can use the left arrow key to move in the command line. So I can come here and just type dash stats. So I didn't have to type the whole command again. I can just use my up arrow key and find the command and I can, I can modify it. So try this out, gdal info dash stats and the file name. Run this, see what happens. This is gonna go through every pixel and compute the image statistics. So let's run this. At the end, you can see, you find some statistics about the data. This is the maximum value of the pixel. This is the mean, minimum, standard dev. This is like all the pixels are valid. There's no, no data pixel in the area. Super helpful. And if you want to now say, I want to know the range of pixel values in all my image parts. And I have literally thousands of them. You can just run this in a loop and you'll get image statistics from all. For programmers who are thinking about this, like, oh, I can use this to extract image statistics for my program. You know what? Let me show you one more option. Many of the GDAL commands have this option, dash JSON. So if you want to say, get the information out from my data and give me a JSON file, why JSON? It's a structured format. All software will be able to read this. So I'm going to modify this and say, add one more option, dash JSON. You can add as many options that you want in the command line. The order is not important. You can add in, as, in whatever order you want. You can even add the options end of the command. So it doesn't matter. So let's run this, gi for stats dash JSON. And I see some smiles on people's face, like, oh, I caught JSON, right? And now I can automate stuff. And this is so useful that now you can, work with this data as a structured data. So that means you can have a pipeline which says, hey, I have got this bunch of files. Let me run GDAL info dash JSON dash stats. I have all this information. I can extract every value out of this and do something with it. I'm gonna show you another tool later on, which is called JQ, which can extract those values on the command line itself and do some math with it. So you can say, give me some, do some statistics on the command line. You can extract those statistics or any other values and do some stats with it. But for now, just know that you can combine multiple commands, multiple options of a command and run them together.